the heartbeat of competition, the drama of the moment. This is NASCAR on Nick Blam Racing. It's the NASCAR Heat countdown to green as we get ready to go racing. 18 thrilling races down and 15 to go in a season compiled of 38 hungry hopefuls, 8 different winners, and 4 contenders currently in the championship hunt. But no matter how you separate them, each driver is looking to be the future star of NASCAR. Last week, the streak was broken, both in terms of Michael Annette failing to get his fourth pole award in a row, and myself failing to get my fourth, fourth win in a row. The magic of the Magic Mile went to 2018 champion Tyler Reddick, placing him third overall in the standings. The question is, who will have a little bit of leftover magic tonight at Iowa to find themselves in victory lane in the infield of dreams? Glam Racing brings you NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from the Iowa Speedway in Newton, Iowa for tonight's running of the US Cellular 250. If you enjoy this content, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on weekly NASCAR racing content during the real life NASCAR season. This week's NASCAR Heat 4 Pole Award goes to the hard-charging Cole Custer. It's his fourth pole of the season, but he has yet to capitalize on that P1 starting position. We'll have to see what that Stuart Haas machine can do here at Iowa. As the field is set for NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing here in the land of corn. Matt Mills failed pre-race inspection. He's going to be starting at the back of the field along with Noah Gragson who failed multiple optical scanning station multiple times. So he's going to be starting at the back, leaving us to start P34 on the outside lane. But it's going to be Cole Custer, second in points, who's going to lead the future stars to the line. Green flags in the air. Let's bring the noise at Iowa. First lap of the race is complete. We're kind of stuck on the outside here to the trying to get our way through the field. We kind of fell back to last for a little bit there, but I was kind of expecting Noah Gregson to be kind of quick and I didn't want to get dive bombed on the inside because, you know, you leave just a half a car length of space and here they come. But we're going to get up into P35, three wide. The P34 onto the inside of the Harmonator. Kind of following Matt Mills through this traffic currently. He's on a mission. Matt Mills failed pre race inspection, so he's looking to gain those spots back that he lost here on the start. John Hunter Nemechek takes over the race lead. Man, we caught up to Matt Mills so quickly there. <laughs> He was on a run for a while. He seemed to be running fine. And then I got behind him and he just slowed up <laughs> for whatever reason. But John Hunter Nemechek takes over the race lead, which makes me wonder what happened with Cole Custer. If there's anyone in a must win position and right now, that is definitely Cole Custer. He went on a tear earlier on in the past. Five, winning four out of the past five races. We have been on a tear. Cole Custer did not have a good finish at one of those races. So if anyone's looking for a win, it's definitely him. 
As Justin Algeyer takes over the race lead. Tried to lay off Gregson there. I'm trying to get a lay off of him. But, uh, he's currently slowing down with a 15 and BJ McLeod here. And we got a gaggle of race cars that we're going to have to deal with at some point. Right now, it's John Hunter Nemechek out front. Oh, man. I don't know who's slowing up this pack. I don't think it's Morgan Shepard. But Noah Gregson, he's trying to go, man. <laughs> he's going to go to the top three wide. We're going to go to the inside of Brandon Brown. Inside of Earnhardt. Maybe it was Morgan Shepard slowing everybody up. I'm curious to see where Morgan Shepard actually qualified. He managed to clear everyone, get around them. Oh, thought we were clear. <laughs> thought we were clear. Spotter was giving us the clear up top signal. And Noah Gregson still very much there. He's going to get pinned up behind Joey Gase here. We're going to come off turn number two. Up into P22. Didn't come off with the amount of speed that I really wanted to come off the corner with, but... I wasn't sure, quite sure that I was clear. I had to be very, very sure of that. Five laps to go in the race. Race currently being dominated by the 23 of John Hunter Nemechek. Who I believe his last victory came at Richmond, so I guess it's no surprise that he's doing well here at Iowa, but Iowa and Richmond are, while they may be shaped similarly, they handle very, very differently. Four to go in the stage. Christopher Bell takes over the race lead. All right, so we got a battle between the 20 and the 23. Curious to see who's going to be the uh, victor of this particular stage. Probably currently a two-car to three-car battle going on up there, up in the front. And they've broken away from pretty much everybody else as we're going to try to work our way up into the top 20. Right around the 39 of Ryan Sieg. Going to look to see if we can get to the inside of Galding before the corner. We cannot. See if we can probably make that outside lane work. Not quite. He's going to have a run. Looking to the inside of Tommy Joe Martins. We're probably just gonna it's probably just be best if we just followed him on through. Two to go in a stage, white flag in the air for stage number one. I noticed I've kept I've been saying that for a while. Like, do they actually have a white flag for the stage? I don't think that's a thing. Can Christopher Bell hold off the 23 of John Hunter Nemechek? We're going to try to get to the inside of Greg Galding. Possibly to get 18th before the stage is over. Yes, we do. Christopher Bell wins stage number one. Kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't expect to see him running up front so well, so early on. It's going to be Christopher Bell followed by John Hunter Nemechek. Last week's winner, Tyler Reddick in third, Chase Briscoe in fourth. And rounding out the top five is Justin Allgaier. Cole Custer falls all the way back to sixth after starting on the pole. We have Kaz Grala, Zane Smith, who usually runs well in the short tracks, up in eighth. Ninth is Stephen Light, and rounding out the top ten is Ross the Boss Chastain. We're going to go ahead and take four tires of fuel, not make a single change on the car. Car feels, you know... Pretty snug at first, but the card starts to, you know, come to us on the long runs, which is what we want. But here we go. Green flag is back in the air. Christopher Bell leads us across the line to begin stage number two. Working on the outside of Justin Haley currently. Golding looking to try to get that spot. Can't quite get there. We have more momentum than he does off of turn number two. Clear him going into turn number three off of four. Couldn't quite clear. Yeah, couldn't quite clear Jeremy Clements. 
go in just a little bit hard. Clements went way wide all the way up to the wall. He's going to lose like four or five spots because of that. My gosh. That was not the move to make there, <laughs> Jeremy. As Tyler Reddick has now taken over the race lead. Tyler Reddick looking for his third win of the season. Possibly get two in a row. Ooh, don't get into Brandon Jones. We just made up. <laughs> we don't need to be out here <laughs> wrecking it up once again. Gonna break a little bit early. Let him get down to the bottom. I felt like he was gonna make that move. We get to run off turn number four. Justin Haley making some moves in stage number two. And now Justin Allgaier is currently in the lead. We had such a run there. We caught up to Justin Haley so quick. Brandon Jones is not letting us get too far, but we need Justin Haley to go on up to that wall. That wall's right up there, buddy. Right up there. Just thought I'd help you find that a little bit there. Up into P14. And now Chase Briscoe takes over the race lead. <laughs> what is going on up front? I think I know what's going on. I think there are, you got a few guys taking the high lane here. Uh, went a little bit too wide in that corner there. That's going to let Justin Haley get back to our inside. He's not going to give us that room. Maybe we can get a run here off turn number three. Oh, wow. Look at Brandon Jones. <laughs> Four wide. <laughs> or 14th. I don't know if, if, if I don't know if 14th is worth it, worth it for four wide, but uh, or for 13th I should say. I don't know if four wide's worth it there, but he made it work. He wanted that spot and he got it. And oh, we got a smoker up ahead. Casgrella comes up in front of the field. Big crash. Caution is out. So the caution actually started back in turn number two. It was coming off turn number two. Kaz Grala was running the top and just gets loose, spins out. Collects Cole Custer and Elliot Sattler. They both get a little bit of damage from that, but yeah. <laughs> Kaz Grala just came up and absolutely just annihilated the entire field behind him. You see, like, he's running, just gets loose. Probably had a tire go down there and... Cole Custer got a little piece of that, but uh, nothing, nothing substantial, nothing like we had to deal with, unfortunately. So problems for the 21 here in the land of corn. Man, I saw that at the last minute. That was, <laughs> that was a rough wreck, man. That was a rough one. So Casbrala brings out a caution in stage number two. Unfortunately, we got involved in that, so we're going to have to pit for our damage. And uh, go to the back of the field and uh, try to start it all over. Elliot Sattler also coming down pit road. Along with Kaz Grala to repair the damage. But we got a long race ahead of us. Hopefully we can make it back up through the field. The 98 of Chase Briscoe is going to lead us down into turn one as the green flag is back in the air. Oh man. <laughs> nowhere to go. Jeff Green wanted to go as well, but there was just nowhere to go. Ooh, we're there, three wide. Here comes Elliot Sadler. Trying to make some moves. There's just nowhere to go. Oh, Austin Hill went to the top. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, not really worth going four wide. <laughs> Back here for like a 31st position. So we're just going to go ahead and just try to be patient here. Earnhardt goes to the wall. We're going to just kind of run through the middle here. Justin Allgaier currently leading this race. Here's to see how many lead changes are going to occur. And oh, Matt Mills sideways. He saves it. What a legend. <laughs> Caution comes out to end the stage. Actually, I think that was the end of the stage. So unfortunately, we do not uh, gain any positions there, but we might be able to make something work here. Might be able to make something work. We'll have to see. Justin Allgaier is your stage winner, followed by Chase Briscoe. Hunter Nemechek, Stephen Light, and Cole Custer will round out the top five. Custer managing to field his way back up into the fifth position. Zane Smith, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick all the way back to eighth goes Reddick. Ray Black Jr. and Brandon Jones will round out the top 
10. We're going to go ahead. Stay out. Hopefully the track position helps us a little bit, but I don't know. We'll have to see how fuel is going to be. But here we go. Green flags back in the air. Stage three is underway. Ooh, big jump on the start. And we hold off the number 10. No, what do we do? We do. I thought he was going to have a run on the inside there. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Can we hold him off? Not quite. Side by side when we come to the stripe. Ah, we just missed out on leading that lap. We're going to go ahead and tuck in behind Elliot Sadler here. Chase Briscoe is going to look for that P2 position. He might get it here coming off of turn number four. Actually, he's going to get it going into turn number three. Big bolt move by the 98 car. Looking for his second trip to victory lane. 28 to go. Curious how the fuel mileage is going to play out here. If it ever plays out at all. That, that's a question because, you know, it may not even matter at the end of the day. Here comes Al Geyer. Ooh, gives us a shot up the racetrack. He's going to get sideways in front of the whole field because he decided he wanted to come up into our door despite having plenty of room on the inside so i don't know why that necessarily happened but we're sitting p3 right now tyler reddick looks like he wants to challenge for p3 he'll go ahead and take that position but not a whole lot we can do about that i mean we just gotta wait these guys out they get strung out a little bit, and hopefully we don't get freight train, Justin. Justin, I'm gonna need you to like, you know, to take the corner like a race car driver, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry about that, Cole. Didn't mean to get down into you. Gonna give him plenty of room on the inside. Yeah, we're getting freight train right now. We're kind of stuck on the outside because everyone's like right down there. I'd love to get back down to the bottom, but. It looks like it's going to be a while before that happens. Might be able to tuck in behind John Hunter Nemechek here. So that's unfortunate. Started P2 at the beginning of the stage and now all the way back to ninth. But how about to 21? The 21 of Kaz Grala after wrecking in stage number two. All the way back up here, challenging. So, nice recovery for the 21. He's probably going to be all over us for a little while here. Yeah. I just wish there was a way to combat that. Because the racing here in Iowa can be so good. It can be so good. But the problem is, like, you just have these guys. You leave a little bit of bottom open. Like, where I'm running right now should not be a problem. But you leave the littlest bit of bottom open... And they are just dive bombing it. Entering so flat, because if you ever entered that flat, obviously you would shoot wide up the racetrack. So now we gotta play musical chairs with the 21 here. Coming off of turn number four. Not really giving him a whole lot of room, but here comes Brandon Brown now. He's gonna dive it down to the inside because again, Left a little bit of bottom open. I'm just trying to take the corner like a race car driver. <laughs> you see, we're none too happy with the 86 car right now. He's going to get sideways in turn number one. Big crash for the 86. Caution is out. Man, the, the 21 just cannot stay out of trouble, man. <laughs> he gets collected, unfortunately, in that incident between Brandon Brown and myself. But, I mean, I only came down into him because... He decided to make a dive bomb move and got up into us, but man, <laughs> he almost clipped our right rear and took us out with him. Luckily, we managed to keep it going straight, but uh, yep, problems for the 86 car of Brandon Brown. Like I said, we'll talk about it more after, after the race, but yeah, you know, you start it, somebody else is going to finish it. That's all I got to say about that. Well, I didn't really intend for that to happen. Um, he got, I mean, 
he he went for a ride there. He went for a definite ride there. So got a lot of guys coming down pit road. So I guess this is the strategy. Curious as to whether we're actually going to start P9 if we're going to start on the outside lane. Hopefully we do start P9. We do. Okay. And yeah, Brandon Brown's nowhere in sight. So big problems for the 86. We'll talk about it after the race. No problem. Here we go. Green flag is back in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, Chad Fitchum out here doing Chad Fitchum things, leading us down into turn number one. I had to get on the brakes so hard so I didn't run over Justin Allgaier there. Did not expect them to slow up like that, but here they come. Here comes Steven Light. Who's sideways to try to get around us. I think he clipped the apron a little bit there. And we are three wide back here, trying to hang on to P11. Almost four wide! Off turn number two, we are for wide. Wild man Noah Gregson makes the move. Remember, Gregson started at the back of the field. Here comes Brandon Jones, who looks like he overtook like three cars in that one corner. <laughs> but not a whole lot I can do there while I'm stuck on the outside. I might be able to fight him off here. Let's see. Hmm, maybe I could do something with him here. Not quite. Brandon Jones is going to get that position up off of us. Oh, big crossover move. Got into his back bumper just a little bit there. And we're going to take that position right on back. Thank you very much, good sir. Zane Smith's going to follow us on through. Oh, but he's going to dive bomb it to the inside. Actually, he didn't. Clean pass. All right, Zane Smith, the AI actually do know how to pass cleanly here. I'm going to try to stay... Oh, man. See, what what the heck is that? <laughs> like, seriously, what the heck is that? Like, you go into the corner just fine, and then you just slow up. Like, park in the bus, kind of. And it's like, there's no need for that. There's legitimately no need for that, but... uh. Unfortunately, we have fallen back to 12th. Ooh. Good run on the outside of uh, the 19 there, but couldn't quite keep it going. Tyler Reddick's walking away with this right now. If another caution doesn't come out, he might have <laughs> he might have a, a victory in his hands here. It'll be two in a row for Tyler Reddick. Third race of the season, I want to say. Ooh, Brandon, come on, buddy. <laughs> That's what things like I don't understand right there. Like there was, maybe he got loose. Maybe that's what was going on there. But you see, he went into the corner just as hard as I did that time. No problem. The problem is, it's just like when they just check up and there's like nothing you can really do about it because it's like, you as the player, have to fight with, you know, wheel spin and actually getting that momentum back up off the corner. But you know how it is. The AI just never seem to have to deal with that. I overdrove that. If he gets by me again, that's going to be my own fault. I managed to block him, but let's see if I can catch up to these guys now. Maybe finish in the top 10. I would really like to do that. Especially since that's our goal position. Lap traffic is playing a factor currently, but there's not much that Tyler has to deal with right now. He's catching up to one car. And I'm not sure who it is, but... We're now finally starting to put a gap on these guys. Noah Gregson looks like he's kind of tapped out in P10. Doesn't look like he can get any further. We got Christopher Bell up ahead along with... Chase Briscoe in the 98. Cole Custer among them. What looks to be Justin Allgaier up there as well. There's positions to be had. The question is just like, is there enough time to gain these positions? We'll have to see. We're catching up to Noah Gragson slowly but surely. Six laps to go in the race. But see, this is what I was talking about. It's like you get him... 
you, you get some, you know, life on these tires, and then it's like then you can start racing. Then you can start passing people and catching them because they seem to race with a little bit more sense, if that makes any, you know, sense. <laughs> Five laps to go in the race. Now the Reddick's walking away with this. He's going to get his second win in a row. I'm trying to catch Noah Gragson. He just has such a good run off the corner. He's starting to catch the guys up in front of him. Oh, but he went wide. That's going to help us catch up to him. But we caught up to him big time, but I'm not enough momentum off turn number four to get around him or get alongside of him. Four laps to go. I'm fight him as hard as I can for this P10 position. Can we get it? Yes, we can. Up into P10. Can we get P9 off Cole Custer? Maybe we can here, but, but here comes Noah Gragson. Which is fair. I messed up turn number four, but he was obviously slower than we were. <laughs> Come on. Etching up to Custer. A little bit loose on the top there. Easy. Kind to try to stay on the outside of Gragson for as long as I can. Ah, I couldn't quite do it. Two laps to go, two laps of fuel remaining. Gragson, come on now, baby. <laughs> come on, baby, don't do this to me. Well, that seems to help have helped him more than anything. Gragson and Bell, oh, Gragson way overshot that corner. That's gonna give an advantage to Christopher Bell. We got cars coming down pit road. White flag is in the air. Elliot Sadler is out front here at Iowa. Can he make it to the end? He does! Caution comes out the, to end the race. Elliot Sattler has just got his first win of the season, and we finish P6. What just happened? <laughs> what just happened? All right, guys, so here are the race results for the U.S. Cellular 250 here at the Iowa Speedway. Elliot Sadler gets his first win of the 2022 season, and you know what? I think he might have won this race last year. I'm not 100% on that. I need to go back and check, but he might actually won this very race last year. And I also, I kept, kept thinking the previous race was the race that we were in. This is the race that we were in last year, so um back to back top 10 finishes for us but zane smith with the heck of a run finishes second justin allgaier after winning a stage wins uh he finishes third just christopher bell after winning stage number two i believe finishes fourth and rounding out the top five is noah gregson we come home with the top 10 and six brandon jones john hunter nemechek tyler reddick and justin haley will round out the top 10 they all came down pit road i believe because a lot of these guys are two laps down. Um, we have, uh, here's the rest of the field. You pick out your favorite driver. Uh, Timmy Hill finishes second, uh, 15th. So, hey, good run for the number 66. Daytona winner Josh Blicky finishes 23rd. Uh, Kaz Gralla, after the, the massive wreck he had, um, and caused <laughs> on the front on, on, on the on the stretch there. Um, he finishes 25th. He rallies back. He finishes 25th. He finishes the race. Nobody did not finish the race. And Chad Fincham is three laps down, which equates to two laps down essentially. Um, but maybe he was the cause of that caution actually at the end of the race because nobody was out, if I remember correctly. Nobody was out. So Chad Fincham might have been the cause for the last caution, and that's why he's three laps down. Fastest lap of the race goes to Elliott Sadler with a 23.287 blistering around here. Chase Briscoe led the most laps of the race. I, I didn't see that coming. Uh, on the move is Noah Gragson who started 37th and finished 5th. Just ahead, we almost got it. We almost got it. The tough break goes to uh, Morgan Shepard who started 14th and finished 36th. And here are the point standings after the second race at Iowa. We have extended that points lead over Cole Custer, 269 points back. Nice. Uh, Tyler Reddick still breathing down Cole Custer's back. He's still breathing down Cole Custer's back, but he needed a better finish than Cole today to, to make up some more ground on him. And, of course, we got to talk about 
today's race or tonight's race winner Elliot Sadler moved himself up a couple of positions in the points after his win today um, he is now <laughs> very very close to take overtaking Stephen Light if he continues that run but Steve has been pretty consistent he's pretty consistent he, he's mostly like you know by 15th to 20th so you know Steve is pretty consistent Elliot kind of runs towards the back so I don't see it happening, but it, it's definitely a possibility there. Um, continuing to talk about the top 10 here, we got Christopher Bell, Noah Gragson, moves some sway back up into the top 10. Brandon Jones is out of it, as well as Jeremy Clements. Jeffrey Earnhardt, slow, steady climb. He's currently running 15th right now, uh, about 11 points behind Ray Black Jr. So uh, if Earnhardt keeps running, as cons if he keeps running where he's running, he'll overtake Ray Black Jr. No problem. It's just that Earnhardt has a few good races and then he'll have one bad one. You'll have like three or four good races and then one bad one. That just kind of like negates what he's what he's trying to do. Um, also, Hill and and uh, oh 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 John Jackson, <laughs> Timmy Hill just overtook John Jackson for uh, uh, 36th place in the points. <laughs> My gosh, I did not expect that coming. I was I was expecting Timmy Hill and also Hill to be back here, just kind of pulling up the rear. Uh, Morgan Shepard sitting 33rd, and uh, oh, Mike Harmon currently sitting 32nd. He's not far from Chad Fincham. He's not far, but he needs to finish better than Chad. He needs to start finishing better than Chad in order to to make his way into the top 30 in points. So if you caught the last race. Yeah, you, uh, you, you caught what I said at the end, and I just wasn't in the mood for, 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 for racing at Iowa for the, for the AI to just be ripping it around the bottom and just dooring you and driving it in incredibly deep, as well as being able to stick that somehow. But yeah, I wasn't in the mood for that. <laughs> I wasn't in the mood for that. There was a couple guys that kind of suffered because of that, unfortunately. But, um, one of those being Brandon Brown. Um, if I could have got to Noah Gregson, I probably would have. Um, I, I probably wouldn't have. I probably wouldn't have. His wasn't as egregious. He just kind of came back after he was pretty much falling off the pace. But yeah, just you can't run your line around here. You just can't run a line like you're supposed to take a late apex, arc it in the corner, get off the corner, you know, and just make it work. You just can't do that. And it causes you to overdrive the corners. You're going to slide up anyway. So you're going to lose the spot anyway. So it's like, I might as well take the fast way around. And I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't. It was incredibly frustrating. And I just couldn't uh, continue the, uh, the, uh, the, the line that I was running. And it was just like, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's frustrating. It's, it's, you know, like after such a good race at, at New Hampshire, such a good race at New Hampshire, you know, fighting for that position and everything. And then we had a good, a few good moments of a good race in here. You know, like I always enjoy like, you know, just, you know, when I was hunting down Noah Gragson for that top 10, I enjoy stuff like that. You know, that that's when it's like, oh man, this is cool. You know, I'm like, I think I can reel them in. And you're just doing that lap after lap. You're just reeling them in just a, a few hundredths of a second, you know, maybe gain a 10th on them, you know, something, you know, just like just little by little by little, just kind of reeling it in. And that kind of stuff is, is still fun. That kind of stuff still, uh, is still good to go. But man, when they just do the things that they do, it just becomes incredibly frustrating and, and incredibly, incredibly maddening to deal with. But it is what it is, man. This, this is, this, this is, this is, this is how, you know, these tracks are and you just have to, unfortunately, um, you got to put up with it for a, a, a few races a year and it just becomes, you know, it's always going to be a thing. Like I said, I wasn't necessarily in the mood for it. I could have, I could have done a lot of dirty to a lot of people, but I, decided better I, I i decided against it you know just try to calm down you know take a breath regroup try to get it back you know um but how about elliot sadler <laughs> how about i'm pretty sure he won that race the this race the uh the, the uh, i'm pretty sure he won this race last year because uh, this was the hot seat that i had taken and it was the goal was to get a top 20 and i wound up getting a top 10 
Um, it was in Garrett Smithley's car, <laughs> but it goes to show you, huh? But, uh, but no, like I, the goal was top 20. I got a top 10, but I believe it was Elliot Sadler that won that race. But that was also pitch strategy for the win because, well, it was a caution that worked out well for him. Elliot Sadler was running towards, you know, kind of like middle of the pack, you know, like he was kind of running middle of the pack. He was kind of running back there with us and, Kaz Grala spins out and, you know, he collects, uh, collects quite a few of us, you know, Brandon Jones, uh, myself, um, and Elliot Sadler. And, you know, we come down pit road cause we got a bunch of damage we got to fix. So we're going to the back and then we stay out and try to make it work. But it does explain like how he was so fast because even with me, like right on his door, he was just gone. And I'm like, well, okay then. And then, you know, you leave the bottom open, you just get freight trained, and it's like, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> what can you do? You fall back to whatever position, and then you just try to, like I said, you just breathe and try to get it back. So that's the best I could do. Best I could do. Another top 10. Um, Would have probably got a top 10, but I don't know if I deserved a sixth-place finish, but you got some guys pitting on the last lap. I guess they honestly couldn't make it or whatever, I, I guess. But, no. Uh we we would have made it just fine. We had at least another what half half a lap, you know. After the the tank would have said zero, we still got another half lap. So yeah, um, like maybe just maybe some guys just were pushing it too hard and just couldn't make it. So it is what it is. But uh, we got Watkins Glen coming up. I know my way around the Glen. I'm gonna have to take like a really like this is probably gonna be a one night recording session where I just come in and just do this race only because the thing with Watkins Glen and the thing with most road courses, I need the laps under me. I get the laps under me, I can move. I can I can get it. I can I can start running some good races and get some running some good pace and stuff like that. I could do that. I understand like the elevation changes and stuff like that is it, still a problem. Not so big of a problem at Watkins Glen. You start getting to the Roval, Mid Ohio, Canadian Tire, those types of tracks, you know, obviously Sonoma. Oh, God, we got to go to Sonoma. I think we do. <laughs> um, but, like, those types of tracks where you got a bunch of elevation changes, yeah, it becomes a serious, serious problem then. Um, I only wish they let you keep on the racing line. That 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 helps out because I don't know where I'm going. But Watkins Glen I know pretty well. But, like, you know, Road America, that's going to be a thing. Mid-Ohio, I've never been there. I have literally never been at Mid-Ohio. So that's going to be a thing. But so I've got like two road courses back to back. One I'm pretty comfortable with. I think I can. I weak sauced it. I weak sauced it. I know two top 20s or whatever. I weak sauced it um, mainly because of mid Ohio. I didn't. I don't know what's going to happen at Bristol because of the last race we had at Bristol. So I don't know what's going to happen there. That might be a win. It can can I win at Bristol? Absolutely, but I have no idea what's going to happen at Mid Ohio. Never been there before. At Bristol, you know, given what happened in the last race, there's no telling what's going to happen there. Where it's just like race gets ruined by a wreck. You know, you see what happened here at uh, at Iowa. You know, your race just gets kind of derailed by a wreck. But luckily, it kind of worked out. Yeah, give or take, you know, <laughs> definitely worked out more for Elliot Sadler. But um, yeah, top 10 at, at, at uh, you know, there was top 10s and top fives. I, I can get that at, at Watkins Glen. You know, I feel pretty comfortable there, uh, but it's just going to be trying to get through the, the next race, which is in Ohio. But Watkins Glen should be fun. It's only 20 laps around there. So we got really, really short stages. I got to remember to turn on relaxed yellows. So actually, while I'm thinking of it, Let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and turn on relaxed yellows right now. <laughs> turn it on right now. <laughs> that way there's no there's no question about it. We don't forget and we can actually, this race might actually run green the whole way. You know, this race might actually run green the whole way. So that'll be, it'll be fun. Walker's Glen is usually fun. I wish you could just take the bus stop a little bit better, but you never really can. But um, yeah, we're looking forward to Walker's Glen dreading mid ohio because i've never been there but yeah i just i just need the laps under me get some laps under me i think oh, i think we'll be good and then we got bristol after that so that'll be the third race in our incentive contract um the bristol double weekend you know so we have bristol night race in uh xfinity bristol night race at cup so who knows what's going to happen in cup 
Dear Lord, who knows what's going to happen there. But we're going to do what we can. You know, the name of the game is just to kind of maintain. That's what we're going to do. Just maintain. Stay the course. Keep our head down. You know, and just grind it out. Grind it out. We don't have many races to go. We don't have many races to go. We're closing in on the end of the season here. So we don't have many races to go. But we definitely still can't afford a bad finish. Because one bad finish wipes away that points lead immensely. It wipes it away immensely. That The only way it, 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 it gets better, the only way it doesn't get any worse is if the guys that are chasing me down, like your Cole Custer, your Tyler Reddick, if they also have bad races. But if I remember, Cole's not too bad at road courses. Um, the main people that are going to be up there is obviously it's going to be your Jeremy Clements, your uh, Justin Haley. They're going to be up there, you know, but... Uh, who knows? Maybe Ross Chastain will be up there. Um, but, you know, maybe Austin Hill. Austin Hill's pretty good at road courses, too. So, anyway, guys, that's the story for another week. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a break. <laughs> take a nice long break for a little while. Enjoy the rest of the day. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that race. And if you did, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to not miss out on weekly NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing here on McBlam Racing. Every weekend following the NASCAR Xfinity Series IRL. Leave a like on the video. Comment down below. Hashtag way to go, Elliot. You know, and because he was the man of the hour today. <laughs> you know, he was the man of the hour. So first, season, first win of 2022. Got to give a shout out to, to Elliot Sadler in the comments below. And like I said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in Watkins Glen, New York.